What's going on guys? It's your boy James here, Beards Cars, back with another video. If you guys are new to my channel, thank you for subscribing. If you guys are just stopping by, consider hitting that big red subscribe button down below. Now guys, in this video here, I want to share a story with you, right? And this story is going to be about my Uncle Gene. So, what I want to tell you guys is, you know, as we grow our beards out, especially once they start getting longer like mine, uh, you guys may have a beard that's even longer than mine. But, this is real important guys. So, a lot of us, once our beard gets this length, we don't actually see our jaw anymore. We don't touch our jaw as much anymore. We're not shaving with a razor. So therefore we don't inspect it as well, you know? And with that being said, you know, we may put a little bit of oil on our, you know, on our hands and on our fingertips and rub it in there. And that's about it. We're not really getting in there and feeling it, or at least I don't. I'm pretty sure a majority of other people don't either. We don't actually get in there and feel our jaw, our beard, uh, behind our beard all the way with that being said you know when i was younger guys i was like 15 years old and i started working construction with my dad and my uncle gene all right so my uncle gene my dad didn't have a beard i think he had like a little goatee at the time but my uncle gene had a beard that was even much longer than mine and much longer than most people i know on youtube so back then you know he was kind of like the oh that dude's got a beard he's the he was a crazy guy with the beard back then although you know now beards are a lot more um just they're a lot more popular than they were um, back when I was around that age, you know, a lot of bit more people were more clean shaven, um, unless they were just hippies or something like that, you know, but anyways, nonetheless, my uncle Gene had a very long beard and it was nice later on guys. So I'm going to skip years later. This is years later after I was 15. You know, this is when I got like into my, probably like my late twenties. All right. So 25, something like that, 26 area range. So my uncle Gene actually had to go to the doctor because he had like a little knot right here, okay? He didn't know exactly what it was, but he had felt just like a little bump, you know, like a little bit bigger than a pimple, but he had a little knot right there, right? And he didn't think nothing about it, so he let it go on for years. Well, I didn't know this at the time, but he had been there for a little while. And basically what happened is he went to the doctors, all right? So when he went to the doctor, they had to do some biopsies, they had to do some other things, and they found out that this little bump on his chin was actually cancerous, right? He went home, they caught, they ended up calling him back and what they ended up doing was, they ended up taking him in for a major procedure, right? So what they did was they had to remove that bump, but in order to remove that cancer, they actually had to remove a good section of my uncle's jaw, all right? So this is how important it is to actually inspect your beard. So, like I said, a lot of us just get in there, we start rubbing beard oil on our beard, and we may get a little bit on our fingertips and rub, but we don't actually feel and inspect our throats or our chin area as much, and we can't see them because they're just completely covered. You couldn't see my chin if you want to. My chin is way up here. And uh, actually, whenever I pull my beard back like this, it looks kind of funny because I'm so used to seeing it hanging. It makes my face look smaller. But we don't inspect that as much as we should. Long story short, my Uncle Gene had a glorious beard, but he hardly ever felt underneath it just washing it and stuff like that like most of us do and you know back then nobody was really using beard oil so he's basically just washing and conditioning his beard with regular stuff and really wasn't feeling his jaw although he did end up feeling a little bump i think his wife actually noticed it the smallest thing you know that nobody would think about you know that little tiny bump ended up being cancer like i said they had to remove a good section of his jaw and then try to reconstruct it as best as they could but nonetheless if he had caught a little bit sooner, it may have been a little better outcome, but having to remove his jaw and stuff like that, remove not his jaw, but a good ch uh, chunk out of it and then reconstruct it, nonetheless, he's not able to grow a beard anymore. Well, he could still grow some hair on the other side, but where that knot was, it's basically like there's no hair because it's reconstructed right there. So his beard would just look, it would look odd to have, you know, a little bit of hair here real long and just a little tiny bit here, but nothing in this whole area here. So... Um, very, very important guys. Now, this is something that I was not sure if I wanted to share or not, but I feel like it's real important to tell you guys things like this. And that's why I'm here is to kind of reach out and touch somebody else. And maybe, you know, somebody that's had this same situation, but for me, this is my uncle Gene's story. I really appreciate it. If you guys hit that like button, maybe share this to somebody else with a beard so everybody can start inspecting their you know, their jawline in their throat a lot more because you could have something going on and you're not feeling it and touching it because you're just kind of getting there washing it and conditioning it real quick. And we're not actually inspecting our jaw or throats for something that could be wrong. Hopefully you guys are uh, doing that. It's something that I do all the time. 
And uh, there's actually been times where I wanted to, I can't see as well, but there's been times where I actually wanted to shave my beard off just to actually really inspect my face and my throat and stuff like that really good because even when I go to the doctor, you know, they might, they hardly ever like check my pulse right here or something like that. They might feel, um, reach in my throat and feel my glands to see if they're swollen or anything like that. If I have a sore throat or something, they might reach in there, but they can't see, you know, at all really to, excuse me, to see anything visual to actually notice something. You know, they'd actually have to get in there and rub their fingers all through your beard and rub your jawline and search for something and most doctors just ain't going to do that from what i can see anyways so with that being said guys let me know if you've ever had anybody with an issue like this to my uncle gene if you're ever watching this i love you man much respect and um anybody else like i said man leave it down below if you guys know anything if you haven't been inspecting your gut your uh jawline or your throat guys and your beard's long like mine i really advise you guys to start checking it out and get in there and really when you're conditioned and washing it get in there and actually feel you're, you know, all that area, actually fill it with your fingers, you know, maybe use one side and even use, the, go to the other hand just for a better feel. You ain't got to do this, you know, daily, just get in there and check it out, man. You never know. So I wanted to share this for that reason, just so some of you guys can start doing that. All right. And with that being said, I love each and every one of y'all and I'll see y'all in the next one.